Well, good evening, and welcome to our Wednesday night uh, Bible study and prayer time. My name is Mike Smith, and I'm so privileged and honored to be able to share God's Word with you uh, this evening. And uh, as we share God's Word with you through our devotional tonight, I want to speak to you on this subject, your strength. Where does it come from? And after I get through with the uh, devotional here in just a few moments, then I'd like to take time and go down through our prayer sheet and let you know how folks are doing in our church. We have quite a few that have had uh, prayer concerns that have been emailed to me and have been called into the office. So we want to take time and run down uh, and go through our prayer sheet tonight and to let you be aware so that you might be able to pray in a very special way for these dear folks. But right now, I'd like to have a word of prayer right before I begin our devotional uh, thought for tonight on your strength. Where does it come from? Let's pray together, okay? Father, I'm so thankful for this day. God, thank you for a good day that you've given us. And now as we come to our Bible study time, we pray, God, that you would give us insight into the precious Word of God. Thank you for people that have just taken some time out to, to study together God's precious word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you have your Bible. I'm going to be giving you some very special verses, some verses that God has laid on my heart this week that I want to share with you in a very special way tonight. So your strength, where does it come from? Here's my question. Where do you get your strength from? Now, I know that many would say from, a, uh, from various, various uh, different places, uh, many would say from working out, uh, from taking my one-a-day vitamin. Others would say from living a healthy lifestyle and just trying my best to eat right. Still, others might say, you know what? I really don't know. And I hope there would be none that would say, I really don't care. But truth is, sometimes we just don't know where our strength comes from. Our text tonight gives us a pretty good idea where, as believers, our strength should come from. Uh, there's a verse in the Old Testament book of Habakkuk uh, that really gives the answer to the question that I've raised and that I'm asking this evening. Uh, here's what the Bible says. I want to share this verse with you and uh, get you a pen and piece of paper. This is a powerful verse. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds' feet, and he'll make me to walk upon my high places. That's a great verse. That's a verse of scripture that God has showed me many times when I just didn't know, Lord, I really need your strength. God would bring me to this precious promise found in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 19, where the Bible says, The Lord God is my strength. And, listen to this, And he will, not he might, but he will make my feet like hind's feet. And he'll make me to walk upon my high places. Oh, listen, I want my feet to be sturdy, and I want my feet to be stable as I journey through this life that the Lord Jesus Christ has placed me on. He's from Iceland. You may have never heard of him, but his name is Bjornsson. Bjornsson. He's from Iceland. He stands at six foot nine, and he weighs over 400 pounds. I don't think I'd like to tangle with him, and I don't think I'd like to face up with him on a football line. Well, he took first place in three of the six events at this year's World's Strongest Man uh, in the Philippines. He's the strongest man in the world because of his size, because of his working out, because of his ability and his feats of strength. He has been labeled as the world's strongest man. But I submit to you this evening that even the strongest man in the world today, with all of his titles and with all of his trophies, is still the weakest man in the world, 
without Christ. You see, folks, without Christ, I am nothing. And so that's why God has placed on my heart tonight the title of this lesson, Your Strength. Where does it come from? Probably not a day passes that I don't claim the verse that's found in the New Testament book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. In fact, our pastor spoke on this verse last Sunday in our Sunday worship. The Bible says this, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You see, I don't dare try to do anything within my own strength. There have been times that I thought that my strength would be all that I needed. It's been those times that I've tried to do the ministry or do what I should be doing within my own strength that I failed. I've learned a valuable lesson in realizing that I can do all things indeed through Christ, which strengthens me. Well, I have a question for you this evening. The question is this, what would you attempt for God? if you knew for sure that he would give you the strength to do it. Well, the Bible says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible also says, The Lord is the strength of my life. Psalms 27, 1. So what would you attempt tonight, tomorrow, next week, next month? You say, Mike, this year is just about over, so why not throw in next year? Okay, let's do that. What would you attempt for God next year? I would really hate to see anybody wait that long, though, because, listen, the greatest attribute that you can give to our God is that of your obedience. Disobedience brings heartache. But the question is this, what would you attempt for God if you knew for sure that he would give you the strength to do it? Well, tonight, this evening, I'd like to share 10 statements that the Lord placed on my heart uh, yesterday, the day before, as I begin to pray for this lesson for this evening. 10 statements that the Lord placed on my heart in dealing with this question, if you knew for sure that he would give you the strength to do it, what would you attempt? All right, here we go. Number one, would you seek him with all of your heart? Question number one, statement number one, would you seek him with all your heart? You say, Mike, is it time for me to seek the Lord? Ladies and gentlemen, in these unprecedented times, in these times where fear has gripped the heart of dear saints of God. We're afraid to go outside. We're afraid to go to the store. We're afraid to go anywhere. And I'm speaking mainly to our uh, older generation, our more mature generation. And many have told me, Mike, I'm, I'm just fearful to go anywhere or to do anything because I fall into that high-risk category of being tested positive and receiving this terrible virus. My heart breaks for you. And I want you to know I love you and I'm praying for you. But listen to this. It's time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Mike, is it time to seek the Lord? Yes. It's time to seek him with all of our heart. It's time to be our absolute best in these times, in times like these. I shared a devotional thought last week. In times like these, we need a Savior. We need a Savior that we can stand upon his promises. And ladies and gentlemen, we have that Savior as believers, as children of God. Would you seek him with all your heart? Would you determine to say, God, not my will, but God, thy will? will be done in my life. Lord, it's not about me. It's not about what I want to do. It's not about what I want to accomplish. But God, if you'll give me the strength, God, if you if you will allow me to, and God, by your help and by your grace, Lord, I will seek to put you first in my heart. Would you seek him 
with all your heart? Would you seek him as if you've lost something at home? How many have ever lost something at home? You put it in a safe place. It was so safe and so secretive that even you forgot where you put it. And uh, many times I will, I will put something back and, and I'll think, boy, I'm going to need that for later. And here's, here's where I'm going to put it. Well, I'll tear the house apart trying to find it. And in a day and a time when I'm not really looking for it, guess what? I'll find it. Well, that's, that's the way it happens. But would you seek him with all of your heart? Number two, would you put him first in every area of your life? Wow. In every area, trust him with your finances. Trust him with your health. Trust him with the relationships that maybe have just gone south. But trust him in every area of your life. In every step that I take, wouldn't it be great if we were to boldly proclaim, God, I'll not take a step unless I know you're right beside me. And guess what? He's promised us in the Old Testament. He's promised us in the New Testament. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a promise. No matter if you're going through the greatest times in your life, no matter if you're facing valley experiences, no matter if if you're facing the toughest time of your life, you can trust him. Number two, would you put him first in every area of your life? Wow. What would you do if you knew the Lord would give you the grace, the strength to do it. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Number three, would you cease from anger? I'm speaking to some folks tonight, no doubt, who have anger issues. Um, oh, we don't know how it starts. Maybe a bad day. Maybe, maybe it just starts out uh, so early in the day that and then it seems like everything just follows pursuit. Everything you attempt, uh, everywhere you go, it seems like somebody's barking at you. It seems like just if it could go wrong, it does go wrong. Wow. Cease from anger. You know, here, here's what I know. We'll say things in a fit of anger to our loved ones that we'd never say to a stranger. Somebody at church who you are dealing with somebody that you're um, talking with or fellowshipping with, you'll make sure that you don't display an attitude of anger so that that person can, can see you. I've said it so many times. You know, folks, we're, we're more concerned. We're so concerned about what others think about us and about what others see in us more so than what God in heaven knows about us. He knows your attitudes. He knows the anger in your heart that swells up. And that anger can happen in just a moment, can it? I mean, somebody can cut you off at a traffic light. Somebody can just uh, step in front of you uh, in a store. Or, or just somebody can put you on hold on the telephone. And before you know it, the neck and below the ears, and then the ears. I mean, it starts turning red, and you can feel it getting hot, can't you? Oh, listen, folks. Please, ask God. God, I want to ask you, God, to take away this anger from me. I don't ever want to have anger issues again. What would you do if you knew God would give you the strength to, to accomplish and to attempt. Would you cease from anger? Number four, would you cease from the secret sins in your life? I'm talking about those sins that hold you hostage. Those sins that ever are before you. You go to sleep and you dream and you wake up thinking, that's me. I did that. The secret sins that hold us hostage, that are wreaking havoc in our life, that are ruining and wrecking our testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ, destroying our effectiveness 
for the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, listen, come to that place. Come to that time. Do it. Listen, if you have to just turn off uh, your your video, just turn it off and, and say, God, I can't deal with this one more moment. I can't go one step further. I've got to deal with those secret things in my life that no one knows about. I had a dear lady call me one day and said, hey, my husband doesn't know that I know, but I know that he gets up late at night. He watches pornographic material on our home computer. I know he does it. It's ruining our marriage. Oh, he pretends like nothing is wrong. Listen, folks, it's the secret sins in our life that ruin and destroy. Remember a couple of weeks back, we talked about, we talked about in our Sunday school lesson, the little foxes that destroy the vineyard. Those are the little foxes that I'm talking about. Would you seize from the secret sins in your life that are holding you hostage, that are wreaking havoc in your life, that are destroying your effectiveness for the Lord Jesus Christ? How about this, number five? Would you cease from being unforgiving? Every one of these ten statements that I'm listing, I could preach a sermon on. Oh, listen. Would you cease from being unforgiving? That's all. That's a series of messages. Who is it that every time you think about their name, every time you see their face, it turns your stomach? You, you get stressful. What they did, what you did, it starts to surface. Oh, listen, the bitterness in your heart will destroy you. You've got to forgive. You say, Mike, you don't have a clue as to what that individual did to me. Was it so bad that they spit in your face? That they beat you with a whip? That they made you carry a cross? That you were hung naked in humiliation upon a cross and you were nailed to a cross? You died was it that bad? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, whatever it is, whoever it is, you need to go to that person. Would you cease from being unforgiving? And then number six, would you cease from not reading God's word? Maybe you've become complacent. Maybe you have just said, you know what? Reading the Bible is not quite as important as it used to be. Well, hey, Mike, I'm, I'm at home all the time now. I used to go to the church and I used to hear my Sunday school lesson and I used to hear uh, the preacher preach uh, the sermon. Would you, would you cease today from not reading God's word? Number seven, would you cease from not praying as you should? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. So many verses in the Bible Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Oh, so many verses on prayer. We have not because we ask not. Would you cease from not praying as you should? Number eight, would you cease from not witnessing as you should? Just the other day, I was at the hospital, and I asked these nurses that had come in for some counseling I asked them, I said, do you know for sure that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? May I never in my heart get away from sharing what Jesus Christ has done in my heart and life. You say, Mike, what is witnessing? Witnessing is just simply telling other beggars where we found bread. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter uh, 16, verse 30, I believe it's 1630, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Oh, listen. You say, Mike, I just really haven't witnessed in a long time. Uh, where do I start? Well, your family's a good place to start. Start with your family. Start with those people that you love the most. Oh, listen. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them 
You say, Mike, how do I do all that? Just tell them what happened to you. Give them your eyewitness account of what took place when you asked Jesus to come into your heart. God bless you for doing that. And then number nine, would you cease from trusting him as you should? You know, these have been a tough last six months, haven't they? I've not seen a lot of people at church, and a lot of people are being so careful. Uh, we've missed each other, haven't we? But listen, are you trusting him? Have you ever thought that perhaps God brought this COVID-19? And I know the deaths are terrible, but do we believe that God allows everything to happen? Nothing happens without God's knowledge, without God's approval. God knows about everything. He's the author of everything that happened, whether it be good or whether it be bad in our eyes. And many times we thought, Wow, God, why did you allow this COVID-19 to happen? Perhaps God's trying to teach us to trust him. Oh, listen, I shared with a group of men uh, on Tuesday morning in our men's prayer time. Um, we've just got used to being uh, where we've always been. We've, we've, we've just become complacent. Oh, God, help me to trust him. Help me to trust him with all my heart and all my life. You know the verse. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Listen, would you, would you just begin to trust him like you used to? Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And then, number 10 and last, would you cease from not being as faithful as you should? Faithful. And listen, I don't need to go down through a list. Faithful in every area of your walk with Christ. Mike, faithful in every area of my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So here's my question. What would you attempt for God if you knew for sure that he would give you the strength to do it? Remember, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Listen, folks, that's a promise. And then you need to remember this. I can do that because of one thing. Greater is he that lives within me than he that lives within the world. Your strength, where does it come from? He will give you the strength to make it. Whatever valley situation, whatever, whatever you're going through, he will give you the strength to do it. If you've never received Christ into your heart, I can't think of anything more important in the entire world. Nothing is more important than you giving your life to Jesus Christ. You say, Mike, how do I do it? Well, you do it by coming to that place in your life where you simply say, Lord, tonight, the best way I know how, I invite you to come into my heart. Would you pray this prayer? I'm going to close my eyes and bow my head. Pray something like this. Dear Jesus, I've always wanted to, but I just never knew quite how to do it. But tonight, I'm asking you by faith to come into my heart. Forgive my sins. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him right now. Trust in him. Ask him to come into your heart and life and to forgive all your sins. If you just prayed that prayer, I want to know about it. Would you email me? Would you call me? Hey, did you know that when you prayed that prayer, three very wonderful things happened? First of all, it came into your life. <laughs> wow, praise the Lord. Secondly, he forgave all your sins. And third, he wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. You're a child of God. Where does your strength come from? My strength cometh from the Lord.
May God bless you. May God help us to live victorious Christian lives by his strength and his strength alone. Well, I want to take some time now and go through our prayer sheet. And uh, if you have your prayer sheet right there in front of you, just pull it out or on your device, perhaps you can look at that. But uh, if you don't have our prayer sheet and if you're not receiving that, all you have to do is email me msmith at hotspringsbaptist.com. O -R -G. Or call the church office, 760-4744, and just say, hey, would you put me on that mailing list or would you put me on that email list so that I can receive a daily hospital updated prayer sheet, okay? All right, <clears throat> excuse me, let me go ahead and begin. Miss Hazel Bailey, ICU, is a nurse uh, at uh, National Park Medical Center. Miss Bailey has been on the prayer list, and with her family's permission, we have that request brought to us so that we can pray for them. Miss Hazel Bailey, uh, on event at National Park Medical Center. She's a nurse there. She needs our prayers. And then some upcoming surgery procedures. Miss Dorothy Johnson uh, will be having an MRI of her spine today. She had that today to see if there are any changes. Uh, pray for her. And then Judy Fox, knee surgery. She had knee surgery on the 13th uh, in Louisiana where her daughter and family live. Where two weeks ago, uh, for two weeks, uh, she'll be in recovery. And then we want to pray for Fred Woodruff. Uh, please keep him in your prayer. Pat Jackson, an MRI of her knee on the 22nd. Timothy McMorland is a friend of Teddy Short. He'll have his spleen removed on the 25th of this month. Debbie Key will be having some upcoming back surgery. Miss Becky McCombs will have another chemical stress test. Bill is awaiting his chemical stress test results as we speak tonight. Please be in prayer and continue to be in prayer for the family of Rob I'm sorry, of Rob Carney in the home going of his dad, Bob. And then for David Aiken, David had some eye surgery for a detached retina. It went very well, but now he's in the recovery uh, stages. So remember to pray for him. Barbara Bloomfield, uh, follow up with her doctor. All looks good. And listen to this, praise the Lord. There is no cancer. Jerry Brock is home feeling better. James Collier, pancreatic cancer. Norm Duncan, he's home recovering now from quadruple heart bypass surgery, doing very well. Miss Jolene Dunn, her brother Connie uh, Ashcroft had a biopsy last week. Well, it came back malignant and is uh, wrapped around his rib. He'll have a PET scan so that they can determine what kind of treatment now they need to do. So please be in prayer for Jolene Dunn's brother. Connie's daughter, Kim, uh, has cancer, has returned in some sinuses and some lymph nodes. Uh, she'll have treatments at MD Anderson. Jolene's sister, Glenda, tested positive just now for COVID-19. Jim, uh, Jim and Glenda are paralyzed. They have two caregivers, so one has COVID, so they are uh, now down to only one caregiver. Uh, this is a very dire situation, so please be in prayer for Jolene's sister, Glenda, and her husband, Jim. Edna Gardner has an unspoken prayer request. Charles Garrison, this is the brother of Pat Matlock, is home, and he's on the road to recovery. Thank God for that. And then continue to pray for Lynn and Betty Green. I was in touch with these uh, dear folks by way of email uh, last week. And uh, uh, they're just having a, a hard time. They're struggling with some pain management. So uh, please be in prayer for Betty and Lynn Green. And then for Clint Horn, he's home recovering from surgery uh, for multi-level spinal fusion. Uh, spinal nerve column uh, decompression. 
uh, just so many different things going on in his life. Howard Johnson is healing very well from surgery. Kurt Johnson uh, recovering very well. This is the son of Loretta Johnson. Robert Ledford, uh, the son of Francel Ledford, is recovering now from heart surgery as well. And then Brother Terrell Luther, he and his wife, Gail, please be in prayer for this couple. And uh, remember to pray for Terrell. Uh, he'll be receiving weekly treatments for his cancer. David Magnusom is recovering from foot surgery. He had to be tested for COVID-19. Pray for negative results. Casey McKinney, relative of Dick Finley, having seizures and unable to see a specialist until 2021. My goodness, be much in prayer. That's in January. And then Robert Nix, his health continues to deteriorate. We want to be in prayer for uh, Brother uh, Robert and his dear wife, Miss Gail. And then Miss Jean Norman is recovering from a heart valve replacement surgery. Uh, Ashlyn Ohm, 21-year-old daughter of uh, Judge Ralph Dome, uh, uh, praying for just diagnosis. Uh, God knows all about that, so pray much for uh, daughter Ashlyn. And then for Derry Ohm, has kidney stone treatments this week. Wow. Tracy Parnell, a dear friend, uh, just praying for God's perfect will to be done in his life. And uh, uh, if you know Tracy, Tracy is a dear brother in Christ, and I ask you to continue to pray for him. And then for Marlon Roberts, this is a friend of Harry and Cheryl Dennison, uh, uh, brain cancer. So be much in prayer for him. And then Sherry and Mike Rowlett, there are still both of them recovering now from their COVID-19. Kim Sanders, mother of J.D. Sanders, uh, her heart was in AFib. They're trying to work out everything. This uh, is the mother of J.D. Sanders, former member of our church here, lives in Fort Smith. And then Pastor Chad Self, this is the son of Bill and Edith Self. Treatments for uh, a tumor are going very well, and uh, both Bill and Edith are asking and really saying thank you so much for your uh, unselfish prayers. And then uh, Billy and Linda Shaw, uh, many health issues, uh, some, uh, some uh, suspicious things on the lungs in Brother, uh, Bill's, uh, Brother Billy's life, and then for Linda, for her back, be much in prayer for this dear couple. Kirk Simpson, Kirk Simkind, son-in-law of Faith and Rick Boardman. He's nearing the end of his chemo and radiation, and so please continue to be in prayer for him. And then for Larry and Dolly Smith, uh, uh, Dolly's surgery on the 18th, and then Larry back surgery is rescheduled for November the 4th. And then for Betty Stark, uh, having some heart issues. Don and Betty Stringer and their son Greg, all three diagnosed with cancer. And uh, please be in prayer for this dear, dear family. And then for Helen Webb's daughter, Gina Radke, uh, she tested positive, my goodness, for COVID-19. So please be in prayer for Gina. Uh, you might want to email or uh, give Helen a call and, and check on her uh, daughter. And then our missionaries, Anthony and Misty uh, Shelton, IMB missionaries to the country of Uganda. You say, Mike, how can we pray for the Sheltons? Pray, number one, that the country would open back up. Pray for protection over the ministry, the seminary there in Uganda, and pray that the airports and the borders would open back up, okay? All right. So many of our missionaries, so many folks on state uh, stateside assignments, uh, they're, they're really stuck here because many of the countries where they serve, the countries have not opened back up since COVID-19. Well, there's a lot of requests tonight, a lot of things on our heart. Let me remind you to pray for our pastor, pray for Brother Manley, for his wife, pray for the staff, Pray for our church as we begin to make plans to reopen uh, gradually. We uh, had a very great 
morning with our men's uh, prayer time on Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock. 23 of our men showed up. Uh, next week, we'll have our Wednesday night Bible study, and then we'll have our legacy uh, event with Brother Gerald Taylor on the 24th, Thursday at 11 o'clock. Brother Paul Heisner will be leading us in worship. Uh, so many so many special things are happening. Miss Alice Robinson, she started back her Sunday school class uh, on Monday of this week. She had 11 of her precious ladies in class. She's looking for more next week. And then Brother Danny Myatt had his class out underneath the pavilion. And so uh, youth and children's activities, we're praying much as they get started back. Please be much in prayer. And then pray for our country. Pray for our president. Pray for the leaders of Congress. Pray for the leaders of the Senate. Pray for our governor. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be much in prayer for all of our first responders. We need to pray for our country, don't we? Yeah. All right. Let me lead us in prayer. And as I pray, perhaps in your own heart, as you continue to pray weekly and daily, be much in prayer for every single name that I've called out. Let's pray together. Father, we love you with all of our heart. And Father, there are so many needs tonight. People who have had surgery, folks who have had heart issues, folks with upcoming procedures, those who are just now getting over the COVID-19, those who have just found out that they're positive for the COVID-19. God, would you be with them? And would you allow them to know that you're right there with them? You've promised us you would never leave us, that you would never forsake us. God, we pray for our country. God, we pray for our, our first responders. God, for those in leadership. God, we pray for the governor of the state of Arkansas. And God, I pray for every home, for every, for every man, for every woman, for every couple, for all of our children. I pray for the entire family of the Hot Springs Baptist Church and for others who are listening. God, allow us to know that, God, you're our strength. And we're only as strong as when we're on our knees trusting you and bringing our petitions before your throne. God, we love you. Thank you for heaven. Thank you for eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, tonight, help us to attempt to do those things that we know we should do by your help, by your strength, and by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you for the privilege of being able to come to you tonight and to share with you God's Word. Hope you have a great week, and if you're able to, and if it's God's will, uh, try, to, try to be here and worship with us this coming Sunday. Uh, join us online, however you can do that, in a safe and a secure way. May the Lord bless you. Have a great night, and have a good week, okay? God bless you. Good night.